Yo, even the critics and the journalists want Sonic Adventure 3 to happen. All right, guys, so I'm sure a lot of you know about this little website called CBR.com, comicbookresources.com. Now, I've made a video about this website before. They uh, post a lot of interesting articles, especially about the Sonic. Some of them are good, a very few of them are good, but a lot of them are just crazy, nonsensical, and just very poorly researched. I think uh, even Geekdom roast CBR.com on their uh, stupid Dragon Ball Z articles. But uh, this one actually caught my eye because this is actually the first time I have seen any journalist, any critic, whatever, demand that Sega should make a Sonic Adventure 3. This is something I only hear from the fans. I've never heard this from journalists before. And uh, this is definitely the ingredient that's needed to push Sega to actually remaster or remake, remake the adventure games. and eventually make the Sonic Adventure 3 because now everybody is demanding this. Like I said before in my previous video, I feel like we are leaving the classic era of Sonic. I don't mean classic era like the 90s, I mean the, the nostalgia, the classic nostalgic era. But let me get into this article right now. Before I do, be sure to smash the like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit that notification bell so you'll never miss another video I post. But alright, let's get straight to this. You know, I have to commend this uh, Liam Evans. He didn't start the article with, uh, Sonic has had a rocky transition into 3D. I'm so glad I did not read that or see that at all in this article. But it does start with this. Sonic the Hedgehog isn't in the best spot, and that is true. But a third Sonic Adventure title is exactly what the franchise needs, and it could save the series. Touche. Now he says, the Sonic the Hedgehog series hasn't been in the best place over the last decade. The so-called meta era of the franchise has been controversial. Yo, this is the first time I've seen a journalist or anyone refer to the past 10 years of Sonic as the meta era. Now this is something that a, a lot of the Sonic fans have said, and I just thought it was just something the Sonic community would say, like a, a small group of people, a vocal minority. But it looks like a lot of people are starting to call this the meta era, and it honestly will be known as the meta era. And I'm not just talking about Sonic Boom. You know, Sonic Colors did this. You know, Sonic Generations did it a bit, uh, Sonic Lost World, every Sonic game that came out in the 2010s was like self-aware of its franchise, you know, and Boom just capitalized on that and, you know, went to town with that, you know, Boom just took it all the way. So, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting that, yeah, we were in the meta era. Now, so it's known for simple level designs, short games lacking in content, the infamous boost gameplay, and, of course, the flanderization of the entire cast of one's beloved characters. This is true, this guy's speaking facts, man. He's speaking facts. Despite this, fans' goodwill for the series remains strong, and hope persists that the Blue Blur will be able to get back on track soon. With the series about to celebrate its 30th birthday, now is the perfect time for Sega to announce its ace in the hole. This is a project that would not only garner immense hype from its mere announcement, but would feature many Sonic elements that fans want to see return. It's time for Sonic Adventure 3. Now, I agree and disagree with this guy. I think we should get the Sonic Adventure remakes before we even get a Sonic Adventure 3. Like I said before in a previous video last year, I have zero faith in Sega making Adventure 3. I'm actually very scared if they do that. It'll be the same type of uh, nervousness as a Sonic the Hedgehog 4. It's just not going to end well. They need to prove themselves first. Yeah, like what Sony PlayStation did with Crash. Now, the first aspect of the series that a Sonic Adventure 3 could improve upon is the story and tone. Recent entries in the franchise have featured basic plots that portray all its characters as one-dimensional. The adventure games are well known for their narrative focus, and Sonic Adventure 2 in particular is considered to have one of the franchise's best stories. I'm not saying much, but dialogue in the modern games has been limited to groan-inducing one-liners or simple exposition, like Baldy McNose hair and all that crap, or BBBE. So uh, that's actually good to hear. I'm glad other professionals are noting this and I'm glad they're criticizing Sega for this because you know Sega, they always aim to please, aim to please their critics. If the critics are complaining about the same thing the fans are, Sega will change. They won't do what they did before. Now it says a new adventure title with a strong plot is the perfect remedy. It should use the main cast in the correct way, portraying them as the characters fans have come to love, not the watered down versions of the meta era. Fans have also been bemoaning the lack of other playable characters in recent installments, 
So, an adventure game that not only treats those characters with respect, but also grants some of them their own storylines, would make players incredibly happy. I'm sure it'll make me happy. I want to see Knuckles be relevant again, other than being an idiotic meathead. So, recent Sonic games, Sonic Forces in particular, have incredibly short levels, like one minute levels, that essentially amount to straight lines the player must run down while holding the boost button. Talk that shit, Liam! Seriously, I am so glad he's mentioning this. I'm so glad he's talking about this because that was my main gripe with forces. Levels can be completed in two to three minutes and have little to no replay value. Sonic Adventure was always the opposite of this. Stages were greater in length. Like even the linear levels in Sonic Adventure 2, the hallway levels, were still way more, you know, immersive and interesting than whatever we got in forces. So like stages were greater in length, but very few were so long that they could wear out their welcome. Each level featured multiple missions to encourage repeat playthroughs and hidden upgrades to encourage exploration. Adventure 3 should learn from its predecessors in this respect. On top of replayability, extra content could exist in the form of the first adventure game's adventure stages, hub areas that can be explored at the player's leisure. The other staple of the duology is in the Chow Garden, which allowed the player to raise and compete with Chow, upgrading them with Chaos Drives and animals obtained from stages. The iconic game mode has been sorely missed and would help bolster the content of Adventure 3. I mean, personally speaking, I don't care about uh, the Chow Garden. I wouldn't miss it if it wasn't in Adventure 3, but it's a staple. If Sega's going to make an Adventure 3, it has to be in it. Sonic Adventure 2 also featured a competitive multiplayer suite allowing players to hunt for jewels, have a gunfight, or race each other, which is what the mode was best remembered for. A third entry should revisit this idea, adding extra characters and stages to flesh out the mode. Sega could even keep players interested with new post-launch content drops. The effectiveness of such an idea has been proven with Sonic's many profitable mobile outings. I mean, seriously, you would think Sega, a company that makes a lot of mobile Sonic games, like they prioritize the mobile games more than the main Sonic games. I mean, look at Sonic Forces. Sonic Forces is the mobile game. They, they abandoned the console game a long time ago, the moment it came out. You know, it only came out with like a DLC of Super Sonic and a Sonic, you know, t-shirt for the Avatar. I mean, even Team Sonic Racing, that game was dead on arrival on the consoles. I mean, meanwhile, Sonic Racing, Team Sonic Racing on Apple, I think it's on Android now, that shit is getting new levels, new tracks. Whereas the console version hasn't gotten anything. Like, you would think a company that does that would make a mobile chow garden. Like, come on. You know how many people would eat up a mobile game chow garden? Like, this is what I don't understand about Sega. They don't capitalize on things. Like, even the mobile market. You know, you remember back in the days, I don't know if any of you uh, Generation Z people remember this, but back in the 90s, they used to have Giga Pets or Giga Pets. And that used to be immensely popular, especially because, you know, it was a Japanese market that made these things. It was cool. I used to I used to have three Giga Pets. My first one was like a duck. That one died on me. And the other one was a dinosaur. The other one was a puppy. My favorite was the dinosaur. It's like a baby T-Rex. This was like virtual pets. Like, Sega could have definitely done this with the Child Garden. You know, upgrade it, modernize it. But whatever, I digress. Now the article continues saying, there are many reasons that the adventure titles are still remembered so fondly, despite the many games released since. Sonic has arguably never been better in 3D, and more recent entries seem to present themselves as everything that adventure games were not. This is true. I mean, as much as I love Sonic Generations, and this same article, CBR.com actually made an article like three months ago saying that Sonic Generations is the best 3D Sonic game. And honestly, I have to agree because me personally, Sonic Generations is my third favorite Sonic game. It's only behind Sonic Mania and Sonic 3 Knuckles. However, Sonic has controlled the best. His gameplay has been at its best with the adventure games. Sonic just controls better in adventure gameplay than boost gameplay, let's be honest. So their focus on a more serious story, multiple playable characters and longer stages were once considered by Sega to be the opposite of where the series should head. But fans have made it clear for many years that a third title in the series is exactly what they want. I mean, not quite. I honestly don't want Sega to do a Sonic Adventure 3. I want them to remake the first two first, then they can make an Adventure 3, or they can call it whatever they want. They don't have to call it Adventure 3. You know, they can call it any other game so long as it has the adventure gameplay style. That's all I care about. Now, the 30th anniversary of the Blue Hedgehog would be the perfect time for such a sequel to be announced. 
celebrating the lineage of the franchise with a return to its most iconic 3D games. Sega has promised multiple new game releases to coincide with the event, and for the first time in a long time, an adventure sequel actually feels like a realistic prospect for fans. True that, you know, um, yeah, and just like what this guy says, Sega did promise multiple new game releases, so between this year and next year, we should be getting a bunch of new games, not just two, like Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces that came out 2017. I'm looking at at least three Sonic games, that's not even including ports and stuff. So what do you guys think about all this? Let me know. Do you think this guy is right? We should get a Sonic Adventure 3? Or do you think that Sega should just pick up their old canceled project of the remakes and just continue remaking the adventure games and then try to make a successor to that? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember to smash the like button, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And that's all I got for now. So uh, until next time, I'm out.